At the Singu crossing in the outskirts of India's capital, New Delhi, protesting farmers face off against groups of men who are shouting slogans against them. Some farmers are seen calling for calm, while police fire tear gas and use their batons with force. Tension's been rising since Tuesday, India's Republic Day, when the farmers' major tractor rally culminated in these scenes at New Delhi's famous Red Fort. Authorities blame some of the farmers for instigating the violence. My government has always respected freedom of expression and holding of peaceful protests in a democratic setup. However, the recent acts of dishonouring the national flag and showing disrespect to the auspicious occasion of the Republic Day are unfortunate. The opposition boycotted the president's speech in solidarity with the farmers, who accused supporters of the governing BJP of causing the recent unrest, both in the protest camps and at the Red Fort. The farmers' movement did not have any plan to get into the city or to go to the Red Fort or unfurl a flag. That doesn't take their demand forward. The farmers' movement is secular. They don't use religious symbols. So this is clearly a conspiracy, and what you saw today at the Singhu border is a continuation of that conspiracy. Farmers have been holding these sit-ins for two months. They want the government to scrap laws aimed at modernising the industry. The farmers believe the changes only benefit big business and will damage their livelihoods. There's been increasing pressure to close down the protest sites. On Thursday night, extra police were sent to one site on the other side of the capital at Ghazipur. But union leaders say any retreat would constitute a surrender, and a call for action saw thousands more farmers arrive instead. Our leader cried for help, and with him cried the farmers of India. That is why we decided early this morning that we should come quickly. The protests are the biggest challenge to Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government. We liked this government during the elections, so we voted for them. And now they are defaming us. They are betraying us, not the other way around. They're promising to stay until the laws are repealed, but talks with the government have so far been unsuccessful. Alexia O'Brien, Al Jazeera.